Welcome to NASA Edge. An inside and outside look at all things NASA. You know, Franklin, when I'm here at the Cape, I think technology. Hey, whenever I'm in Florida, I think technology, especially when you're at Kennedy in the Cape. Yeah, and we're here at the Cape to talk to the high therm folks. Well, actually, not the high therm folks, the people that get the images for high therm, the cast glance crew, if you will. And we're gonna find out how the cast glance group actually tracks the space shuttle on re-entry and get some very, very good images that you probably won't see anywhere else in the world. Yeah, and they use technology to be sure. But it's not just technology, human factors as well. A little hand-eye coordination. Yeah, let's check it out. Amidst the special effects in your aircraft, what exactly you operate here? What, how does this big system work? Well, this, this is a gyro-stabilized um, airborne optical platform. Is that, a, is that like a Steadicam then? It, it, it it's, gives uh, you it's, a, it's, it's a Steadicam, except the only thing moving here is a gyro-stabilized gear. Um, everything else, the optics and the cameras and the sensors are all fixed. Um, the reason for that is obvious. We can't have a huge tracking mount on an airplane. You're, you're always looking to conserve weight and conserve size on an airplane to keep it small, compact, and lightweight. So rather than having a huge pedestal that, that turns a bunch of optics and cameras, we're basically only moving and steering a gimbal mirror. That gimbal mirror sits in this cavity right here. And when the aircraft is moving, uh, the gyro sends signals to little torquer motors that compensate for the aircraft motion. Our standard configuration is with five sensors on it. We've actually modified this particular system with a camera for NASA. This is a high resolution standard video camera. Uh, but we filter it for near IR light, which is at the very edge of the visible spectrum, as um, you may or may not know, but... Um, <laughs> you can assume not. You can assume not. Assume not. Okay. <laughs> but what we do is we filter out all that color visible light, and we, we concentrate on the very edge of that, of that uh, spectral band. We're trying to thermally map the surface of the shuttle over decent spatial resolution. What we didn't have was a camera that could give us good spectral response over that spatial resolution, which is why we put this new camera in for NASA. You need to like uh, shuttle balance the camera. That's right, shuttle balance is what we call it. I'm sort of in charge of uh, acquiring the data for the, the NASA enhanced camera. How much technology is involved in just hooking up the computer to uh, the cameras? We bought some normal camera off the shelf and uh, hooked it up to this computer, for the most part, a relatively simple system. Off the shelf at Best Buy or off the government show? Um, a little bit more technical than Best Buy, <laughs> but uh, NASA added a camera. Um, its maximum use is good for the near-infrared imaging. So rather than looking at visible light, we're really more interested in infrared radiation coming off the shuttle. That heating, depending on what temperature, puts out a different amount of infrared light. Well, we're measuring that light, and through our calibrations, what we've done, we can take that energy that we, we measure with the camera and go back and calculate what temperatures are coming from the shuttle. I'm sort of looking at it in real time and saying, well, it looks pretty bright. I'm gonna, I'm gonna dial down the integration time so that our data is useful throughout the whole data collection. That's pretty interesting stuff. Yeah, it's, it's been fun working with the project. Uh, the operator will sit at the system here, in this case it'll be me, and all the tracking is done manually. We have assistance in trying to help us find the shuttle as it comes over the horizon. As you can appreciate, it's a very complex task to try to find something several hundred miles away from us initially, moving it in excess of Mach 15. The uh, Act site or acquisition site is a way we can visually track the target we're trying to uh, put the camera on. A lot of times when we're using this, what we'll do is we'll, we'll stand off of it a little bit We'll catch the target with both eyes and then bring it in, acquire it visually. It feeds into the uh, cast glance system in the back and allows the cast glance operators to slew the camera to the target that's in the act site. So when you say slew, it basically talks to the cameras in the back? Basically, it provides a position for the cameras. And we're using the pilot's best instrument, his eyes, and they know that since we have uh, the best eyes in the airplane, Ooh. that's why they put the act site. <laughs> The tracking is done through these tracking monitors here. The operator sits and he can look out right out the window 
or you can look at any one of the views on any of these cameras that we have selected here. If I'm in track mode, I can move this oh, wow. back and forth. You can see the little arrow indicators here. That's giving us the exact angle that we're looking out the window. If we have to maneuver the aircraft such that the shuttle remains in that cone, and then within that cone, we track. So you so, have to be in close communication with the pilot then, because he basically helps you. That's right. As mission director, what I'll do is I'll, I'm constantly evaluating these numbers as we're tracking along, and as the shuttle's getting closer and closer, we'll, there will we'll eventually, it'll necessitate a turn. Yep. And what starts off as a, as a benign turn, as it gets very close to us, turns into a very dr dramatic, much more aggressive turn. So you were in communication with Steve? Yes. What is, what is he telling you, like bank left, bank right? He is telling us bank left, bank right, needs more rudder, uh, it, you know, Hopefully he's telling us it's looking good. The camera has a very small field of view, so he's letting us know where the subject is. Just let him catch up here. Steve, you're driving the plane at this point, right? Yeah, okay, we're um, 20 up, so he's actually gonna start to pass us. Let's start to bring the turn a little bit now. Now start to turn. Okay, okay. No, we're good, we're at 10 forward. A little more wing up if we can, wing up. There we go, bring it around harder, that's good. Uh, we fly a racetrack, basically, to get our timing down. And in all the headings and all the angles of the turn, uh, are designed such that as the shuttle passes, we can maintain that viewing angle. That I'm so again, you're, it's your communication, your team with the pilot, all sort of working in concert, mid-mission, to make sure you get you know, success. That's exactly right. For me, that's the most rewarding part of this whole thing, is bringing the whole team together. There's a lot of people on board the plane, from the pilots to the navigators to our cast plans team. You've got people running data acquisition computers, you've got people tracking. It's a very dynamic thing, particularly in that moment of interface where we're actually tracking. Sometimes months of planning, particularly on this mission, that that go into those just few seconds of time, those few moments of time, and everything has to work just right. Everything we do here is all manual and hands-on, and it really becomes more of an art form. There is wonderful technology in the original gimbal design here, which is probably 25 years old, and it still holds up to this day. You mentioned you know, teamwork, that's the beauty of this. We, we, uh, our success is, is built on everybody's efforts rather than relying solely on technology. So Steve, if the, the cast clans crew is a lot like a film crew, what kind of position do you think uh, I would have on your team? Well, the, uh, the operation does have uh, a lot of positions for somebody with your background and expertise. And uh, matter of fact, I think I have a perfect job for you. Oh, can't wait. What I, the, hey Blair, can you stop talking for a second? What I need, what I need from you right now, okay? We need six foot longs, all right? Two of them with extra peppercinis, one of them with Dijon mustard, not American, please, not American mustard, okay? I, okay, you know, I, okay, you know what, maybe you're not up for this, I think we're gonna redirect. What position did Steve give Blair? I think he's working in lighting. Wonder if they'll need me during the shuttle landing. Yeah. <laughs>